Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy day. Happy Sabbath once again. Happy day. God is good. All the time. What about all the time? God is good. Amen. Amen. I'm so happy to be back home. Amen. And I'm also glad for the goodness of the Lord that He has sustained our choir to this very moment. I wanted to thank first and foremost uh, the pastor, Pastor Momani, for inviting me. You know, there's a time Sister Carissa called me and told me, Pastor, I want you to come to our church and preach on the choir day. I said, thank you for the invitation, but no thanks. The only way that I can come is when your pastor invites me. And I'm glad that your pastor called me and invited me to come and share the word of God with us. And when the pastor invited me, I asked Carissa, what do you want to miss? What do you want me to come and speak? What to give you the title call? This far. And you know, as a preacher, when you're given a title, you know, you're being limited. And I said, well, there's a title called This Far. That's very interesting. I will surely make sure that I, I speak about that. And that's what the Lord has for us this morning. Again, I want to thank Pastor Momani, and uh, I'm always with your pastor. We take each other once a week with Pastor Ezra. And I can testify that your pastor is doing a good job. And it's been tough for, 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 for this church. We are very conscious of the fact that you have been under the weather, lost some of your dear members. It's uh, been tough because uh, Zenyanyuki is still a member. His membership is here. So that's what I'm saying. It's very painful always know that you have a lot of sick people. But one thing I'm always excited is that there's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. And I know I say, God, answer the prayer of Abdal, He can also answer your prayer. That's how fully I'm persuaded. God is in the business of answering prayers. So, thank you for the daily prayers. Thank you for the daily prayers. I'm glad as I look around, I see the same uh, Brother Henry. I'm glad you're still sitting on your same spot. <laughs> uh, it's only Brother Douglas who has the trans uh, moved. He used to be there, and then now he's moved to this side. Douglas and Choma. Glad that he's <laughs> Yeah, I'm seeing the old box, the old people, and then uh, Brother Morongi is saying, is that, you move back a little bit? You used to see where, used to see where Sister Susan used to Sister Susan, yeah. Yeah, so come back to your position. I'm glad uh, that at least, uh, let me see, I can see some lot of new faces, new faces. Pastor, good to see you, good to see you this morning. And uh, all of you, I'm glad that uh, this thing of this business of mask, you know, I don't know how long we we'll continue having it, you know. You never know when somebody is happy or angry or annoyed. Even if you tell them smile, you don't know whether they are smiling. Yeah, even shake, shaking their hands. I used to say, okay, you can give somebody the heart, it's hard about it. I used to say that. But now we don't do that. Yeah, just from a distance. And especially with Omicron coming back. We don't know how far we will go in this situation. But all in all, God is good. I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Well, you are always remembering me on the pastor's appreciation. I've always received a card signed with your members. And I'm glad that you always remembered me. And I'm all, 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 let me say this. I love you, KCC. And I'm always in my prayers. As we talk with pastors, we pray. But I pray for you all the time. That's one thing I know. Even my voice, 
My young, they don't call them boys nowadays, they call them young men. Immediately when they go to where we minister and in the afternoon, after 20 minutes, even before they have lunch, they're already here in KCC. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I told them, you go do the ministry at the Faith Church and uh, Tamaris is at uh, uh, Ramsey. We have a guest who is speaking to us, Pastor Joel Okindo from Nairobi. And we are having a children, children evangelism starting tomorrow for one week with Pastor Kino at Faith Church. So that's why we, they couldn't accompany me with me to, to, to celebrate how far and this far the Lord has been good to our choir. Again, the choir is a ministry. KCC choir, you know very well, I normally say it's not just a church choir. You are a ministry. You are indeed a ministry. You have a bit serious business in this community of preaching, of ministering to those who are downtrodden. It is a ministry. Don't just think that you're just here to sing in this church. You are of the community choir. And God has ordained you so far to this end to continue preaching this everlasting gospel of the kingdom. Because very soon it's coming again. Hallelujah. This morning, I will pray for you. In the afternoon, the city will be launched, but I'm here to pray for you. I will, it was not in my notes, but something has just told me that you need to pray for this choir after your presentation. I see we are caught up with time. It's 22 to 1 o'clock. Please, I will humbly request you to, to indulge with me and uh, in this journey of preaching the word of God. God has something for us this morning. And I'm asking you to ask God to prepare your hearts and mind to hear the word of God because there's always a lot of disturbance, uh, detours, so that, that you don't hear the word, the word of God. Did you come with your Bibles this morning? I believe in the word of God. We're going to read the word of God this morning. And... Uh, going to read from uh, the book of First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 7. Which book did I say? First Samuel chapter 7. First Samuel chapter 7. Allow me to read from the verse number 12. Verse number 12. Reading from the NIV version. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Miz Mizpah and Shem. He named it he named it Ebenezer, saying, This far the Lord has helped us. This far. This far. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is the time that you take charge in order to speak to your children. And we are all gathered here by the house called by your name to listen to you speak to us and to remind us about your oracles, how faithful you have been to us. And together we can say with Samuel, this far, by faith, you have been our Ebenezer. You have brought us you have helped us. We are ready to hear your word now. Take away every distraction in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a very interesting verse of the Bible. And I've come to know sometimes when uh, you read the verse, you wonder what's going on here? 
And in this one, I see it appears to be the end, the end of the story. The end of the story. And if it is the end of the story, how does the beginning look like? And I've come to know, brothers and sisters, that uh, those people who watch or rather in the cinema, cine cinematology, they normally say that for you to capture the minds of the cinema goers, you have to give them the end of the story or rather the highlight of the story of the movie. And it captures you. It's shown uh, within 20 seconds and you say that is a good movie that I would like to uh, go and watch that movie. And maybe you plan that at the end of the Sabbath you will find yourself in ABC cinema. I know there are people who love going to, to movies because they have seen a story or other clips of the story on the TV or on the YouTube. This is the end of the story. This far, there is a story from the very beginning for Samuel to come and pronounce this statement. That there is a stone that has been erected. There is a pillar that has been set. And when the children of Israel had to ask, what is the meaning of this pillar? What is the meaning of this story? You would have the opportunity to tell them and to narrate to them about God's journey in the life of the children of Israel. And you go with me to the very beginning of the chapter. We find that in, chapter, in verse number one, in verse number one of the same passage we have read, we find that the men of Gilead, Jerusalem, came and brought to Abinadab the ark of the Lord in the house on a hill, consecrated to and was consecrated to Eliezer, his son, to guard the ark of the Lord. Here we find the ark of the Lord has been brought back. The ark of the Lord has been outside the territory of the Israelites for 20 years. The Ark of the Covenant has been brought back. And when it was brought back, they did not bring back to the center of the Jewish nation. It was at the very peripheral, at the boundaries, at the parameters. And it was there for 20 years. Stay with me, ladies and gentlemen. I want to indulge with you once again to stay with me so that we may know so far how God has been good there. The Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant is being taken care of Eliezer at the peripheral, at the Shabbats of Israel. For 20 years, the Ark is there. And the reason is that the Ark of the Covenant could not be brought, be, be, be brought back to the center. is because at the center, there were other gods. And in verse number 2, when I read the, from the New Living Translation, the Bible tells me the children of Israel were, they felt that the God had abandoned them. That God had abandoned them for 20 years. That God was not doing anything to them. He tells them that uh, during this time, all Israel mourned because it is seen that the Lord had abandoned them. But they had forgotten that the Ark of the Covenant is outside there. The point someone comes to tell them, God has not abandoned you. I find it in 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 4, 33 says that they have abandoned me. That's what God is saying. They have Go to that extent to bow down to the Ashtoreths and the God, the goddess of the Shidonites. God is saying that you are the ones who have abandoned me for more than 20 years. And the psalmist says very loud and clear, God does not abandon his very own people. Hallelujah. 
Psalms number 94 verse 14 it says, The Lord will not abandon his people. He will not desert the house that belongs to him. God will not abandon his own people. The children of Israel had felt that God had abandoned them. But we find here that God has made the assurance that he does not abandon his own. John chapter 14 verse, 20, eight, eight, verse 18 says, No, I will not abandon you, nor leave you as orphans in the storms. I will ever come to you when you need me most. That's what God, through prophet Samuel, told the children of Israel, that I will not abandon you. And as a result, for you to know that I am God, God told Samuel, God told, told Samuel in verse number 3, for you to know that God has not abandoned you, you need to put your house in order. There's some prescription I want to give to you. Number one, repent. Number two, take away those idols. Number three, come back and serve me. You are the one who have left me. But when you left me, I am ever present, ever ready, waiting for you. I want to come back. Brother Lawrence, God is telling the children of Israel that I want to come back and make ways for you. One, once again, repent, metanoia. Change the way you think. Change the way you think. That's what repentance is all about. Some people have been very negative. There are some people have been very cynical. God is inviting them to say that uh, you need to come back and change the way you think. Instead of being negative, you need to start seeing positive. Instead of seeing the, the darkness, I invite you to come and see the light. Hallelujah. He told them after you have changed, after you have taken away the, those gods that uh, are shivers and bad away, come back and serve me. Come back and I want to journey with you in making a difference in, the, in people's life. That's what God told the, the children of Israel. And in verse number 5, in verse number 5, um, the children of Israel have agreed to do what Prophet, uh, Prophet Samuel tells them. And in verse number 5, after they had agreed to change uh, the way they think, uh, to put away bars and asteroids, and to serve God diligently, God, through prophet Samuel, he tells the children of Israel, now, assemble all the Israelites at Miz Mizpah. He tells them that now, you have repented. You have uh, taken away the idols. You have accepted to serve me diligently. I want to make a deal with you. Let us now meet at Mizpah. Say Mizpah. Mitzvah is a Hebrew word which means a higher priest. It's a Hebrew word which means a higher priest. That you have been down here for a long time, but now I want to make a deal with you. Come to the higher priest. You have been doing things down here for a long time. You have been limited down here. Your perspective down here is too small, but now I'm inviting you to a higher place eh, so that when you are in a higher place, you may see Father, when you are down here haha, when you are down here you just see things down here you just see these things here, you see your neighbor here, you see your your, your, your friend down here, but when God invites his own, those who have repented those who have taken the idols away, those who have decided to serve God diligently. God invited them to Mizpah. Mizpah means a higher place. And in other, if you see the other translation, it says in Mizpah, it, it, it is a place where you have the outlook towards the future. It's a place where there is a panoramic view. You stand and you see Father. You see not only where you have been that this far, 
you are, when you are down here, you just see this far. But when you are in this far, you don't see this far. You see that far. That's what God told them. And the children of Israel came to Mitzvah. They were in the higher place. And when they were in Mitzvah, when they stand on the higher place on the mountain from Mitzvah, they could see Mount Moriah. From Mitzvah, they could see Mount Calvary. From Mitzvah, they could see the end from the very beginning. But when they were down here, they could see the idols. They could see their differences. They could be so petty. But now God has transposed them to Mitzvah, where they see far. And when they assembled at Mitzvah, ladies and gentlemen, Samuel told them there's only one business at Mitzvah, and that business is to worship God. Hallelujah. In Mitzvah, on the higher place, is the place where you come to tabernacle with God. While they were in Mitzvah, they cried to God. That's what the Bible tells me in verse number 7. They cried to a point that they did not have tears. Now they came with buckets of water and they poured water. Have you ever moaned to a point that you don't have tears? Have you ever gone to a Bible service? The people have cried. The only thing they can just is to hold the grass and pull it. There's someone just holding their hair and trying to pull it. They have no energy to cry. They have no energy to waver. They have come to a point just to tell God, Lord, we have totally surrendered to you. At whisper, they were at a place where they come to worship God and say, God, we know it is you who we should trust. And the reason why they were crying, because down here, when they depended on their, themselves, in chapter number four, Elder Abdara, the Bible tells me they depended on their own ingenuity and they went to fight the Pharisees. And on that day, 3,000 of their men were killed. And they decided, that, ah, we will do another way. And they consulted each other brother. And they went and they said, we need to take the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant to the battlefield with the Pharisees. They got to convince uh, Eli, who was the high priest, uh, and Eli commanded his sons, uh, Hophni and Phinehas, can you take the Ark of the Covenant to the battlefield? And when they took the Ark of the Covenant to the battlefield, that day, 30,000 men of the children of Israel were destroyed, were killed down here. But now, God is inviting them. Say, down here, you have been fighting for a long time. Down here, you have been using your own acumen. Down here, you have used your own expertise. That's the reason why you have been defeated. That's the reason why you have not won the battle. That's the reason why you are always crying. That's the reason why you feel that God has abandoned you. But up here, May you just come and worship me. And they were crying and they made their way straight before God. And while they were worshiping, say with me, what means mama? While they were worshiping God at Mitzvah on the higher press, the Bible tells me in verse number 8, the Pharisees had, the 7 and 8, that the children of Israel had gone to the mountain to worship. And they knew that they were going to get their strength through their worship. And they came together and said that we should not give them the opportunity. We need to go up there and attack them before they get the energy to attack us. That's what the Bible tells me. When they were worshiping there, the children of Israel were worshiping at Mitzvah. The children of the Philistines were planning for war. They are worshiping and they are down here planning. And you know, when they were there at Mitzvah, they surrendered everything to God. And they sold someone. Because when you are up here, you sit down there. 
you see the end is coming. When you are in a higher place, you see the target down there. When you are on the higher place, you see this side. When they were up here, down there, they see the Philistines gunning up, coming up to fight them. And they were caught up with fear. That's what the Bible tells me. They were afraid because of what they had done, what the Philistines had done to them in the past. What they had done to them, destroyed many 30,000 men, 3,000. But the point is that when you are in the presence of God, you need not to fear because God Himself tells us that in my presence there is fullness of life and power and strength. Hallelujah. And someone says that you don't need to be afraid, you need to keep on worshiping. You need to come, keep on worshiping God. And while they were there on the mountain, ladies and gentlemen, they kept on worshiping God. And while they were worshiping God, in verse number 10, the Bible tells me, but God, I love this word. I love, it says, listen, verse number 10. Now, uh, verse number 10, it says that, but the Lord, I like that statement. I like that statement, ladies and gentlemen. It says, but the Lord, but God, but God, this might be tough, but God. Genesis chapter 8 verse 1 says, but God remembered Noah and the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. God, but God remembered. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, but when you intended to harm me, but God intended to accomplish good. Psalm 73 verse 26, my flesh and my heart failed, but God is my strength. Acts chapter 3 verse 15, you killed the elder of life, but God raised him from the dead. God, but God, this might be hard for you, but God, when you are on the higher place, just say, but God, Bible tells me, God, when he saw they were coming on the higher place, God did not speak. Just God cleared his throat. <clears throat> God cleared his throat. <clears> throat> Before he spoke, he had to clear his throat. Maybe he had not spoken for a long time. But when he cleared his throat, <clears throat> on the other side, the furious and the Bible tells me they had the thunder. For, for, for God was clearing his throat. <clears throat> but for them, they had the thunder and the lightning. And the Bible tells me, ladies and gentlemen, these evil people got confused and they started running away. The children of Israel were a little bit scared, but when God cleared his throat, they, they saw the, the Philistines getting confused and they started running away. They, 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 the children of Israel got now their sword. They, they said, now God has shown himself. He has shown out and shown up. And they said, those who are afraid, they said, now, They got their strength. They start running away. And they followed them. They said, down. We will show you. You have been scaring us for a long time. You have been praying for us for a long time. But because God has come to aid us, we have the strength. We have the power. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about, I'm about to finish. I'm looking at the book. They showed who shows up makes a difference. He who shows up makes a difference. When they knew that God had showed up, they got their swagger back. They got their confidence back. They were ready now to fight. They were ready to stand against the enemies. 
They now the focus is not what the enemy can do to them, but what God can do through them. Someone at this situation says, God is here. Hallelujah. He is here. After the children, the, the person had been destroyed. They came back, they said, Oh wow, we have chased them. We have done. We have done. Samuel stood up and said, You have done so much for me and for us. I cannot tell it all. Now make a rainbow. If, if, if I had 10,000 times, it still won't be enough. Now make a rainbow. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so much for me. Samuel stood up and said, Umenipa nafasi kwa hiyo mungu nasema asante. You have given me the opportunity that you have fought the battle for us. I'm standing on behalf of the children of Israel just to say, thank you God. And because of that, to Taima Wimbo Waushini. Because of that, to God be the glory for the great things He has done. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, God has done so very much for us. When you look back, you can say that if it had not been for the hand of God, I don't know where I could have been. And someone was so excited up here in Mizpah. And he said, hey, young man, bring, bring these stones, bring these stones. And they started erecting a pillar. They built a pillar here. And he called Ebenezer. A pillar was built so that when they go back and the children ask, what is the story about this pillar? Tell them what God has done for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to tell our children about our story. Are you with me? Amen. Some of us who have come to this country, we have refused to tell our children about how God has been good to us. How God has walked us through the life's journey. Tell them about your story. There's this guy called Henry Blackaby who says that in his book Experience, Experience in God that every Christian should have a, a memorial stone in his or her house. You need to have a stone in your house. What God has done for you, mark it. Have a marker. Say, God, you brought me from here to here. As Judy, you say it. God has brought this choir from here to this place. When we look back, we all together say, to God be the glory. You need to have a marker in your family. Remind your children, show your children where God has brought you from. Sometimes they don't know, they think that you are driving even when you are young. <laughs> take them back to history. If you have the opportunity, take them back to where it all began. Take them back to your school. They see how you used to walk to school without shoes on your feet. How you used to take just a cup of porridge without sugar. Take them back to time and tell them, I am here because of what God has done for me. The point is that this far, the Lord has brought me. Which means, if God has brought me to this far, he will take me thus far. Brothers and sisters, mark where God has brought you up to. But where else God will take you up to is for you to go to this far. This God who brings you this far will take you thus far. This far is good. Listen to this. This far is good. But thus far is better. I say this far is good. But that's far is what? Better. You have a better future. If God has preserved you to this moment, this is not your destiny. Hello? This is not your destiny. God is transposing you to 
the higher priest to Mizpah to see up yonder, to see where God is taking you thus far. If he has been faithful to you in the past, he will be faithful to you in the future. If he has fought for you in the past, he will fight for you in the future. By the way, I'm about to finish. Say with me, read of it, Lord. Give me two minutes. This word, let me just summarize. This word, Ezra, Ebenezer, is a stone of help. In Hebrew, this word Ezra means Azar. Help means Azar. This word Azar in Hebrew, in Hebrew, it has a lot of meaning. The way the word love, you know, love in English, it's love. Love in English, but in, in, in Greek, it has for me. Are you with me? Yeah. But the word Azar, which means help, has also for me. The first meaning, it says that it, it is guarantees of God's protection. When you mention the word Azar to a Hebrew speaking person, when you mention that word Azar, it means God's protection. That God has protected us in the past, God will protect us in the present, but also God will protect us in the future. The word Azar, protection. Number two, the word Azar means assured as the, of God's providence. It was first used in Genesis chapter 14 when God provided a ram for the biggest place in the sacrifice for son, and that's Isaac. Jehovah Jireh Azar. On the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. This means that when you say this far the Lord has helped. Azar not only means protection, it means provision. God will provide to you the desires of your heart. If he has provided to you in the past, he will provide to you in the future. Therefore, don't be afraid of the future. The word Azar also means God's presence. That's number three. That is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. That he, he says, I will be with you to the very end of the age. It means God's presence. That when you walk up and down, God will be with you. God's presence. He will never leave you nor forsake you. When you have this pillar of stone, as that, it means God's presence. The last one is God's peace. When you mention Azar to a Hebrew person, it means that God will provide us with peace. Verse 14, you find that after the victorious winning of the battle, there was peace, which meant that God provided peace. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to humbly request you, may you erect the pillar of salt in your family just to remember that God has so far been our Ebenezer, that God is not only our protector, that God is not only our provider, God is not only that is with us, but he will give you peace that surpasses all human understanding, brothers and sisters. Somebody allow me to sit down now. Allow me to sit down, but I'm coming back to the choir. Amen. Choir members, you've gone through laps and downs. Have you lost some of the choir members? And even there are some people who have given up, who are in this choir. Who are in this choir? Maybe you thought that this choir is taking you nowhere. Maybe you were sitting in the choir, but in one way or another, you get it up. But I'm inviting you, I'm making a call, an altar call for only choir members today. So that as you may join this other choirs, I pray for you. Anybody, and even somebody wants to join this ministry, I don't call it choir, this is ministry. Because God has a better place for you. God's going you somewhere, a better place to see your future, a bright future, a bright future where he fights for you. Anybody who wants to join the choir, maybe you, in one way you are in the choir, you in business or 
otherwise your school made you slack a little bit but you want to make a new year resolution as we come to the end of 2021 2022 that i want to come back to choir i want to come back and serve god in his ministry anybody who wants to do that was in the choir before
They may see that the God who fights for his children. I thank you, Lord, even for the brothers and the sisters who have decided to come back home to the choir. My Father and my God, I commit them to, to your able hands. Even those who have, in one way, maybe were hurt in other people's words, they left the choir and they gave up. Lord, disturb them until they come back to serve you. This afternoon, we are launching the seventh CD that we made to partake of us, that we are living to this very moment. That because we are living, we are promised to serve you. We will serve you, Lord. My Father and my God, we thank you for accepting our prayers. Keep on upholding us with your righteous hand. Prepare us for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, and let God's children say, Amen. Amen.